usually do. You see, most of the electricity in the world is still made by burning coal. And uh, people just go on burning it everywhere, no matter how green they are. They try and pretend it isn't happening, but it's there in the background. Because without electricity, any modern city would collapse totally in a very short time, in a matter of days. Because everything depends on electricity, the, the, all the infrastructure of the city, and you've just got to have it. So they're not going to do very much, and the more they hesitate to replace coal with nuclear, the worse the situation is going to get. Because in the end, there is no alternative but burning coal or burning nuclear. The oil supply is not not indefinite. It'll run out before too long. Well, we've, you've mentioned the, the forecast, the, the potential damage to uh, the rainforest, the Amazon forest specifically, what could happen there if, if everything goes as, as wrong as the signs mm -hmm. are pointing to. And at the same time, you're very aware of the politics involved in environmental questions. Do you think we could come to a time where the people say that in order to protect the Amazon forest, it should be taken over by maybe some international institution? Well, I'm very cautious here because this is for Brazil. And it's for you, you people in Brazil yourselves to decide. But I'll give you one strange thought to think about. If you're still really worried about nuclear waste, put it in the forest, because that will scare the developers away. <laughs> but the wildlife doesn't mind it a bit, as Chernobyl and Bikini and other places show. They flourish in the presence of it. When the, when the Stern report came out, the, the Stern report, which approached the, the environmental questions from an economic point of view, since he was the former chief economist of the World Bank, and his, he said that we need to spend billions of dollars now to protect the environment. Otherwise, we're going to have to spend many, many billions later on in trying to fix it. It's, it's endless, you know, but it's not going to be done, is it? Well, I, I hate to contradict him because I think he's an honorable man and he's saying the, 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 the right kind of things. But in my view, I think the probability that spending all that money would do anything useful is very low indeed. For political reasons? Partly, because for people political, don't believe but it. also for environmental reasons. You see, the Earth itself is now contributing to global warming at a rate comparable with that that we are contributing to it. As, as the environment changes, uh, then it, it becomes an emitter of carbon dioxide instead of a taker out. When the flor forests were flourishing everywhere and the land was, was good and in good health before we farmed it, it was adequately taking carbon dioxide out of the air. There's no problem at all. But as you take down forests and turn it into farmland, it doesn't work so efficiently. It, sure enough, it draws out carbon dioxide in the growing season, but it doesn't do it anywhere nearly as well as a big forest. And uh, so unless we do something, like I said earlier, like burying the carbon, we're not going to really resolve our problem. But well, wouldn't you be concerned that they, it may lead this this perspective may lead to a rather conformist point of view we'll say well it's too late there isn't much that we can do about it so just let it be not a bit because everywhere we will be finding that as global warming increases and it is increasing all the time even though it may not seem to be it increases in places one place and decreases slightly in another but the net effect is it. as it increases so life will become more and more disturbed by it. In Britain, we are seeing people emigrating here in no unprecedented numbers. Uh, why? Because it, it's a more viable place than where they've come from as a result of climate change, and it's that we're fairly easy to get to and to come into. Um, the, the amount of food grown will be beginning to drop off as time goes by. All manner of things like that will bring the environment to people's notice. And when something quite big happens, like London floods, as will happen in the course of time, uh, then it will be very, very apparent to everybody that some living here that something nasty has happened. And uh, so there, you, there's no hiding from it. And because of that, we have to spend all of our efforts building up our, our defenses against climate change damage. For example, the Dutch, who are very wise people, have already started building their houses on stilts. They are aware of them, and, and they're thinking in terms of, 
of defense against the dangers, adapting, in other words. Then this is, we'll use up most of our energy and provide work for people. Not necessarily, it's useless to actually fight back in the sense of let's avoid it. It's coming, so let's prepare ourselves. That's why I disagree with Sir Nicholas Stern on the, this issue. The problem is that if you just try to fight it, two, two things happen. One is you can't do it. We don't have the capacity in the world to fight back against global change. And secondly, it, 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 the way it's done via subsidies always turns it into a corrupt kind of operation whose main objective is to make a lot of short-term money, not to do anything to improve the life of people on the planet. So for some 40 years after you created this, the, the, the concept of Gaia that took uh, not only took your name all around the world, but led people to think about the environment and this relationship between man and the environment, the biosphere. Do you look at Gaia nowadays with sorrow? With oh, no. No, as I said, Gaia is exceedingly tough. As my co-worker, Lynn Margulis, described her, she's a tough bitch. Uh, she's now three billion, five hundred million years old. And that's pretty old. It's, a, it's about a quarter of the age of the universe. And uh, she's faced all manner of uh, adversities. The huge comets impacting the Earth, great, gigantic volcanic eruptions that covered huge areas with lava. All manners of things have happened. And we've still got life on the planet. It's kept going. The sun has heated up 30%, and yet the temperature has always stayed, apart from its wobbling up and down, uh, um, in, in a comfortable region where life can exist. So, oh, and Gaia's very strong. Nothing we can do, I think, will affect her. She will just move, like any animal does, to a more comfortable state, which happens to be the hot state. And we'll survive also, because we're a very tough species. But the current cozy world we've lived in will not persist. James Lovelock, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.